feel that one of the most important things to being a good experimentalist is to know why you're doing what you're doing at every step of the way. From the big picture, what is the goal of the experiment? And even bigger, how does it fit into my overall project and my goals? To the little picture, why did I add buffer P1 to the sample? And what's in P1 anyway? By knowing what's going on in every step, not only are you then able to troubleshoot if things go wrong, but it gives you a much greater appreciation of what's going on. It allows you to start to think like a molecule and to be able to really appreciate just how cool all of this stuff is. Even a boring procedure, like a boring procedure, like a mini prep, okay, yeah, it can be kind of boring. It gets exciting though when you're actually being able to think about what's going on in every step. And so those kits are great, don't get me wrong, I'm about to go use one of them, but it's important to know what's inside of each of those kits, what's going on at every step. So before you dive into an experiment, dive into the protocol. You should know what you're doing at every step, why you're doing it. And so sometimes you might have to do a little like Google searching and trying to figure out what's in these different things, but you should get a general sense of what's going on. And maybe you don't need to know the super, super technical, but at least the broader picture. This is also going to allow you to create your own experiments. If you know why you're doing things at different ways in different parts of one experiment, maybe you can mix and match different experiments, different techniques you learn about here and here and here. And before you know it, you're designing these really cool experiments. And yes, a lot of it is just so that you know how you can troubleshoot when things go wrong. Maybe you skipped a step. Oh, did I ruin things totally? You know what was happening at that step. Maybe you're able to correct things. And so knowing why you're doing what you're doing is really important for all that stuff. It's also really, really important when you go to say apply to grad school or something like that. You don't just want to tell them what you've done, you just want to show them that you know why you did what you did, that you have a big, big overall sense of what's going on in the world and in your experiments. You want to have control over things, as much control as you can have in science. Basically, everything should be, like you should know how everything fits into the bigger picture. So when I go to plan out an experiment, I actually write down on, in my experiment, I explicitly say, okay, this is the goals of this experiment. Both the goals in terms of, yes, I want to isolate this plasmid from these cells today, to the goals of how that contributes to the bigger project. So this plasmid has this, is for this protein that contributes to my project, blah, 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 blah. So by integrating all these different levels, you're then able to stay on track with your research as well as think about what you might want to try next. And it helps you have really, really nice notes to look back on, and especially if you do them digitally and you can like search for keywords and things like this. So always keep those goals in mind, um, but also don't worry if you, your kind of goals go a different direction as long as you still know like what you're trying to do, what you're doing. And so remember that Go ahead, use that kit, just make sure you know what's inside of it, so you can think both inside and outside the kit. So remember, it's not about how steady your thumbs are. A robot has really, really steady thumbs. Um, a, being a great experimentalist is really about using your brain. And so when you're training as a scientist, this is one of the reasons why it's really, really important to choose a lab based on the people, based on the supportive environment, not just based on the research question. You can learn the skills there and then you can apply them in a different lab or your own lab in the future. And really grad school say is about learning how to think like a scientist and think like an experimentalist and all this stuff. Rather than what exact skills you're going to learn in terms of your thumbing and all that stuff, that's stuff that you can pick up um, anywhere. And so it's really this thinking that is the most important thing you want to focus on when you are doing your training whether you're an undergrad, whether you're a grad school, throughout. And science is, you never stop learning. And just remember to keep on thinking about why you're doing what you're doing, and then you're able to be super creative. I think people might think about scientists as being kind of rote um, and robot -y, but really, biochemistry is a lot of, lot of creativity. And so I hope you love it as much as I do, and I think that really thinking about what's going on helps you do so.